Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Rice Society of Victoria, for giving me the opportunity to present my PhD finding. First, I would like to acknowledge traditional owner of the land on which we are meeting today. Let's start my PhD uh, presentation with one question. What happened when you visit the doctor? Yeah, usually discuss the reason of your visit. Maybe you have your blood pressure check and your weight as a general index of your heart. What about this question? How do you feel about your heart? The work during my PhD has shown that individual perception of their own heart provide really valuable information. Globally, as well as in Australia, cardiovascular disease and the dementia are the greatest cause of long-term disability claim for older individuals. As the aging is the most profound risk factor for the cardiovascular disease and dementia, our chance of getting these diseases also increase when we get older. If we get the disease, it may impact negatively on our well-being and also place an extra burden on our family members. So, I'm sure everyone in this room, including me, do not want to be affected by the cardiovascular disease and dementia. So, can we predict who is more likely to develop cardiovascular disease and dementia? This could enable early intervention to help predict that disease. My PhD project investigates whether a simple questioner asking the individual how they perceive their own heart could provide new insight into the individual risks of the dying and developing cardiovascular disease or dementia. To address this, I used the ASPRI cohort, who is relatively healthy older people living in the community. The majority, 87% of the cohort were from the Australia. Followed this cohort for seven years and also conducted annual assessment. I used the SF12 heart-related quality of life questionnaire. It consists of 12 simple questions asking the individual about their perception of their own health. SF12 included two main components, physical and mental aspect. Here are the same example question. I calculated physical and mental component score of heart-related quality of life using the algorithm Higher score indicate better perception of their own heart. That is what I found in my PhD. People with a higher physical heart-related quality of life at the baseline hearts are the less likely to develop connected decline, cardiovascular disease, and less likely to die. Mental heart-related quality of life was also predictive, but only associated with the cognitive decline and dementia. It means that people with a higher mental heart-related quality of life are the less likely to develop cognitive decline and dementia. So, these findings provide the solid evidence that physical heart-related quality of life at the single assessment, that is a baseline, predict a, a strong predictor for the incident cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. But physical heart-related quality of life may be susceptible to change over time. So longitudinal pattern of the physical heart-related quality of life could provide additional prognostic information. So I added new perspective to the fee by examining whether the longitudinal pattern of physical heart-related quality of life could predict subsequent risks of cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality. 
This figure shows the longitudinal pattern of physical heart-related quality of life among my study participants. We can see that most participants maintain their good physical heart-related quality of life over time. Approximately 14% have the notable decline over the first three years after that slight graduation. About the 6% of the cohort have the low physical heart-related quality of life over time. Over an every two-year follow-up, after the longitudinal pattern identification, I found that the low group had the highest risk of fatal cardiovascular disease and all cause mortality, whereas the declining group had greatest risk of developing incident cardiovascular disease. So this showed that declining physical heart-related quality of life could be the early indicator for the developing incident cardiovascular disease. This study is the first study in this field and they provide the evidence that uh, provide the information, the uh, importance of the physical heart-related quality of life assessment in predicting heart outcome risks, especially for the older people. So the next important step of my PhD project is to examine who, who are the uh, more likely to have low or decline physical heart-related quality of life. As we know, when we get older, we might experience more uh, life cost transition events, such as reduced income after the retirement, partner illness, partner loss, friend and family member illness, conflict with children and grandchildren, the death of our bed, and loneliness. So as a next step, I examine whether these factors influence physical heart-related quality of life root. That is what I found in this study. People with a low socioeconomic status, less income, no payward, no voluntary work, experiencing loneliness, partner illness, friend and family member illness, many problems, are associated with a higher likelihood of being in the low or declining group. Now my figure looks very complex with the right association and the mediating factors. We can see that most economics factors have the indirect effect on the physical heart-related quality of life, either through the stressful light event and loneliness. But not that many problems, conflict with children and grandchildren have the additional mediating factors between the economics factor and physical heart-related quality of life. These relationships were either through the loneliness this is also the sum of the first study for the Australian. It highlights that the role of the social welfare policy then enhance the economic autonomy and the social support in order to promote the well-being in older people. Bring it all together, loneliness, economics factor, some risks and structural life event have the impact on the heart-related quality of life, particularly for the physical aspect. Lower heart-related quality of life was associated with the highest risk of incident heart outcomes. So my PhD finding highlights that inexpensive, self-reported, heart-related quality of life has a direct clinical implication. It could be the part of the standard outpatient heart risk assessment, especially for the older people in the primary care setting. So my finding reflects the paradigm shift toward the patient-centered care in this 21st century, and also support the government health policy initiated to incorporate health-related quality of life into the health system. All study of the My PhD project has been published in the different academic journal. In addition, my novel finding, uh, my novel finding has been highlighted in the editorial and the newsletters for the clinician as a new, much needed, overlooked perspective in the multidimensional approach for the chronic disease prevention. In addition, my finding also received the media attention and the highlighting that personal insight may predict future heart events for the older people. Thank you for the attending my presentation. Thank you, Rice Society of Victoria and panel member organizing committee of the today events. 
my PhD project supervisor, Esri and Asop, uh, participant and the key collaborator and the team member. A special thanks to the Monash University Graduate Research Scholarship for my PhD journey. Thank you.